G'day guys, welcome to Rumble's Fish Room. So, if you're interested in riding, I'm going to put some riding footage at the end of this video. I think, I haven't actually been riding yet, so hopefully there's footage at the end of this video. Um, but basically, I want to show you the flower horn eggs, and I want to, I want to get someone's opinion, actually. If you've bred flower horns before, one of you might know. Um, I've got some lunch cranking in the air fryer, so we'll give give that a nice shake before we go. So I'm back at 1080p and there's a reason. Let me show you why. All right, so when I'm at 4K, basically what happens is um, these clips that I've recorded are 4K and then to edit them, I have to remember 4 minutes 44 and then add it there and then I'll let you see so that's a 4 minute clip and it's basically what's that like 1% every second and a half so yeah you can do the math if you want but the point is like it's taking me ages to edit these like ages and um the problem is I can't select if I could select them all and hit and hit convert it would be cool but I can't actually do that and I actually don't know how much is dropping the quality converting it like you guys watch this video and then watch the videos the last few days and you tell me if you can actually tell the difference in the video all right so I'm actually going for afternoon ride instead of a morning I can't go riding tomorrow um, but so I'm looking at this wall I'm not confident that it's going to look good but my wife seems way more confident she thinks that once we start layering the paint that it will look good but you guys well that's the video I'm trying to edit right now and I'm trying to rush because I've got to go writing and my video is not editing alright so we're going to have to wait for the screen to unfog I'll be back Alright guys, so I've got my flower horn eggs down here and basically what happened is a crap ton of the infertile eggs fell off the plate. Now I, I've never really experienced this a great deal before. Normally the wrigglers fall off but I think I was too aggressive um, with the plate. Uh, I might have done a water change and the fresh water that I was putting in was like pelting the plate and the infertile eggs actually fell off the plate to the point this whole tub is infertile eggs. Um, so I've got bulk air going in there to keep it moving but what happens is th the fry aren't very smart. They clump up on the, on the infertile eggs. So my question is, has anybody done a batch where they haven't intervened? Because separating this like this takes hours. Like I basically suck the um, infertile eggs and then I always get like a good clump of good um, wrigglers so then you got to transfer the wrigglers back to that and then I always leave this tub I never empty it completely because you always find more wrigglers in there um, so basically this batch is really important to me I want as many survivors as possible so I'm willing to put the time into this batch but I don't ever remember putting this much time into any of my other batches so I think what I'm going to do is I know this pair is fertile now Next, uh, this batch is growing out I'm going to try them again in about two to three weeks and I'm going to breed them again and I want to do a batch without intervening at all like just letting the batch um, do what it does see how many I lose to the infertile eggs also I was thinking maybe running the methylene blue a bit longer um, I, I change it out at like three to four days but I, I might change it out at like five days like so basically this this stage when you guys can't really see but no focus um yeah so I normally change it out at three days when they start to get the black dots but I might start changing it out when they actually fall off the plate because 
it takes so long and it's so tedious so I definitely want to change my methods on this also putting them in the tank sucks so um, normally I leave them in the tub until they're completely waterborne and free swimming um, it's so much easier to look down on the tub and separate them the tank was a bad idea but anyway guys I know there's a few a couple of flower horn breeders that do watch so um, I'm hoping I can grab your advice I was about to say goodbye but it's not goodbye it's see you soon because this video is going to continue on um, I don't know whether it will become tradition or not but Sunday riding clips is uh, a bit of a thing at the moment so we'll keep it going um, but I don't ride in summer so it's going to be a seasonal um, video clip thing anyway I'll see you on the bike so if any of you guys watch my riding video about three videos ago maybe two someone might fact check me in the comments I actually rode this river so you can see this track goes into that river and this river was completely dry keeping in mind when I rode it it was still winter so like we thought I thought this river never gets water in it I've never seen water in it um, and it's flowing pretty well but like the when it's dry the shape of it is actually like berms and the you you ride the berms it's the coolest thing I've ever ridden hands down better than anything I've ridden Alright guys, I don't really know what I plan on filming here, but I mean saying, not filming, the voiceover. What are we going to say? Alright, so this, this this bloke in front of me, he's about, um, I don't know how old he is, maybe 14, and it's one of the guys that's going riding with. It was his son, and um, it was really cool to teach, like, sh well not teach, but like ride with the kid and give him a couple of pointers. Um, I've had heaps of people give me pointers over my time, so it was cool just to return favour for once. Um, so this hill climb was pretty cool, I, I enjoyed this one. The camera as usual doesn't really give it justice, but you can kind of see by the water ruts in it how steep it is. It's actually meant to be a fire break, and generally fire breaks are pretty boring. That's definitely one of the more um, exciting fire breaks I've ridden. Um, and then so the young fella and his dad, they took off. Um, and then I decided to go out for a bit of a ride by myself. Um, I don't really like riding by myself. This bit here that I'm riding, um, I tried to like circle the car in a way, but it, at the same time I'm not overly familiar with the area, so um, pretty much this clip here was kind of me looking for the car but also riding just for the fun of it. Uh, it was getting late in the afternoon so I definitely didn't want to stick it out too far. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see how skinny the trails are here, and uh, I'm glad I got bark busters because those um, treat those plants either side are spiky, and they actually are that spiky. They get you through the gloves. I actually wear quite thin gloves, um, not by choice. Just I accidentally ordered some online, and you know how that goes when you don't see it. Um, I knew I was getting closer to the car because you'll see like there's I'm um, going over quite a lot of whoops and um, basically when you're getting close to where the cars are it's pretty whooped out. Um, I think the main reason is um, some people that go out there they don't do the big loops and they just ride near the car so there's a lot more riding traffic um, on those tracks that um, loop near the car. I'm pretty sure, I wasn't 100% sure but I'm pretty sure um, I was. this track here is like a little 10 kilometer loop that loops around where the cars are but um, at the time I didn't I wasn't completely sure where I was but um, yeah like I said I was trying to look for the car um, I've got a really good sense of direction I don't know why or how um, but I've never been touch wood I've never been in a riding situation where I haven't been able to find the car um, the, or the closest I have been in was one time we're on the beers and we were on the quads in the middle of the night and I did get kind of lost for an hour but we we got back to camp um, it was also um, even spots I've never ridden before somehow I managed to find the car uh, but I definitely don't recommend drinking and riding and as you guys know, I'm pretty sober full stop now, so I don't even re recommend drinking. 
Um, so, yeah, I didn't really like this bit that much. You can see how whooped out it is, um, but it was a it was a bit of a challenge at the end of the ride, you know, when you're getting tired. Um, so I'm getting, it's like a switch just flicked in my head one day, um, and I'm getting used to standing up. And then right here, I almost stack it. Like, the video doesn't really show, but um, I almost ate shit completely. And I was like, I need to find the car. And then you look right here, there's the car. Um, basically, I was like, I really want to find the car. And, and um, I was blessed. I found the car.